All right, welcome everyone. So this thing is getting recorded. So welcome to another week of edition of FX Prosperity Academy doing a weekly top-down analysis as we look at it um, to the direction of the market of what's going on for the week. Um, as we head into um, basically the last week of April, which is the first month of the second quarter. So this is today, Sunday, April 23rd. Um, what I have on the screen is a disclaimer, just to let you know, I'm not gonna let you guys, I'm not gonna repeat and restate what's verbatim, but basically what we're showing here is just for educational purposes, okay? So I'm not showing any trades of what you should take, which you should not take, I'm not dictating you should take this trade. These are my analysis. This is what I'm seeing from my experiences <clears throat> based on the technical and fundamental analysis. Um, please, whatever strategy that you're trading, use this as for educational purposes or use this for uh, additional perspective to your own analysis to see if you agree or disagree or if you see a different market. Hopefully this is more, uh, I guess, um, it's, it's more of a, a additional support and um, and again, educational purposes on how we trade at FX Prosperity Academy using and following smart money. Okay. So with that being said, make sure you are very careful with your trading. Um, always trade and, and use demo trading, purple trading, purple paper trading until you are really good at it. And then also make sure you use in risk capital because you could lose some of all your money. Okay. Now that I got that out of the way, let me go ahead and switch my screen. We're gonna go right into the fundamental analysis for this week and see what's going on on the financial calendar. So you guys should be seeing my Forex factory, which is, you can use any type of Forex fundamental ca calendar. They have it on my FX book, they have it on FX street, they have it on Forex factory. This is what I use, it's very helpful. Um, just to kind of give you a calendar of outlook of some of the fundamental um, news report that will affect the market and the currency, okay? Starting with this Sunday, we have um, really not much going on always on Sunday. And Mondays is when I use for setups and get my trade set up for the week. Um, if you're swing trading, that is the best thing to do. If you're day trading, it's also the best thing to do as you trade from day to day, okay? So coming Monday, we have two currencies that are on bank holiday, which would be a New Zealand dollar, Australian dollar, meaning low volatility on those particular currency pairs and, up, um, and also low volatility on this particular currency, okay? And that will wrap up Monday. So Monday is trap day, so you wanna be very careful about what trade you're entering on Monday because if you do not have an outlook or a long-term bias outlook, you could get trapped on Monday trying to follow short-term traps, okay? Now, coming in on Tuesday, we have a couple of news here, very, very important to be aware of, um, starting with starting with um, the Asian session, you could expect to see a little bit of low volatility on Euro, so because it's an Italian bank holiday, so some of the volumes may not be as moving. Doesn't mean that none of the Euro crosses would be moving, but just expect some low volatility there. And then as you get into um, New York session, we will have some news starting at 10 a.m., right? So as New York session starts at about 7 a.m., um, the indices New York stock open will open at 9.30. So at 10 a.m., consumer confidence, new home sales, this would definitely affect those, uh, those indices and equities market for sure. And it'll start to show some volatility for Forex pairs on dollar crosses starting on Tuesday. And then we get into A's in session later on that evening, and then you're gonna have Australia's reporting those CPIs, okay? So Australia's right now is at 1.9, and they're saying that their CPI, which is their inflation data, is starting to calm down. Now, if that does come down, well, that's gonna be negative forward, expected negative, um, information or negative sentiment for the currency and therefore it should weaken the currency, right? Because higher inflation is great because it insinuates for um, higher currency interest rate. Okay, so be aware of that. So mark your notes that that will happen on Tuesday. Okay, so moving on to Wednesday, um, it looks like there's not really a lot going on on Wednesday in terms of major news. 
we do have news coming in at 8.30, which would be just simply durable goods. Nothing as a showstopper, so expect this day to be normal average daily range pairs, right? So if a pair moves around 80 pips, expect about 80 pips. If it moves around 100 pips, expect about 100 pips. Nothing really high and nothing really low and nothing manipulative, sharp, 100 pip candlestick moves, anything like that. So just a regular currency move on Wednesday, but expect some good volatility coming in, which is pretty good. All right, so moving in on Thursday, now we start to get a little bit of some serious uh, news that will heat up the market. First off, nothing in London session, but definitely at 8.30, you're going to have the GDP report. The GDP report is the growth domestic product on how the economy is doing. Are we growing or are we not? And if you are following anything regarding to what we've been doing, especially if you're one of our coaching students, we're following about what's going on with the dollar index and especially with the economies and the effect of the Feds, the FOMC rate decision. So right now, the expectations or the objective of the Feds regarding FOMC is to slow down the economy, right? So slow down the economy. And what they want to do is make sure that the economy is growing very, very slow. So with that being said, we're expecting um, that the currency is to be, um, they want the, the economy to slow down. So if they want the economy to slow down, well, that's also going to slow down the, the, the market, the equities market, and inversely strengthen the dollar market. So if the advanced GDP is starting to slow down, what they're expecting to go from from 2.6 down to 2%, then this is when we're expecting possibly strengthening in the dollar. So we're gonna take a look at technically because the fundamental tells us what's gonna happen or in terms of the expectancy of a bias of a particular currency or market. And then we'll look at a technical to see exactly when we can expect to see that at our key and supply demand zone, which we also have artificial intelligence reports as we use for confluences that give us a predictive outlook, predictive outlook on what we expect to see from the particular currency or the currency pair and market in the next 24, 48, and up to 72 hours, predictive. That is very, very key when a lot of, and all market analysis is basically all lagging, including support and resistance, looking at historical price data. Very, very important. And if you don't know what that is, please tune in to check us out and, and, and reach out to me and I'll be more than happy to walk you through our process and how we use a lot of the predictive tools, but we also look at price action to kind of give us a predictive assessment with a very high accuracy moving forward to catch a lot of pips and to be very, very profitable. Okay. So after that, we got into, uh, we're going to uh, the Asian session and in the Asian session, this is when we are expecting, hello, Thursday night. Um, it right now it says tentative. Normally this happens around 930 p.m. Eastern time, 9.30 p.m. Eastern time, which is around 6.30 p.m. Um, Pacific time. And if you're in UK, obviously that's going to be like around, what, we're talking about 1.30, about 2.30 in the morning. So that could be around 1, about 1.30 in the morning, um, about, um, and if you're, in, if, you're, if you're in the Australia, New Zealand area, Obviously, that would be around 11.30, um, I believe, about 11.30, 12.30 um, in the morning or by noon for the release. And this is going to affect, this is the Bank of Japan Central Bank rate decision, right? Now, the last time, they did not raise interest rate. They stayed at negative interest rate. And they stayed at negative interest rate of negative 10. 
uh, negative 0.10. They're the only currency that's currently in negative interest rate. And guess what? They are projected again to do a negative 0.10 interest rate. Now, however, the last time they did not raise interest rate just recently, it did weaken the currency shortly. And then all of a sudden it strengthened the currency um, days after. However, the last week or two, right? Now we haven't had a central bank rate decision on the Bank of Japan for a couple of months, but but since that Bank of, uh, bank of Japan decision, the currency has been weak. So JPY currency has just been getting the butt taken off um, whipped by other currencies and therefore a lot of the currencies with JPY is obviously on the right side, quote side of the pair has been bullish. So in other words, all of the pairs against JPY has been bullish going up. CAD JPY, SHUF JPY, all the way to GBP and, and uh, Euro JPY. So if you've been following every JPY pairs, hopefully you've been getting an opportunity to go long on a, do a lot of the dollar crosses, right? So being long, it's great short term, but expectancy of at least some JPY currencies to kick in getting strength could be very, very tricky, and it is eventually going to come. Or, you know, and, and this not only can be for a technical reasons, which we'll take a look, but it also could be for unexpected, again, JPY, um, the Jap J Japanese um, government or the central bank could do some type of intervention. And when they do that type of intervention, it's like a red buzzer button that just hit the button to strengthen the currency or buy up a lot of the um, JPY currency, therefore shorten the pair of a lack of thousand pips at one time, which they, we had about three Japanese um, intervention, Bank of Japan, um, Japanese intervention last year that just dropped the currencies like a thousand pips. So we got to be very, very careful with that. So hopefully you're putting your stop losses or you're hedging or having some type of risk control or management control that we teach here at FX Prosperity Academy as well. Okay. That would be a crazy Thursday. So you want to be very aware of that. Wednesday is going to heat up. Thursday is going to be hot. Okay. So let's move on to Friday. It looks like it's a pretty full eventful Friday. Let's break this down a little bit, starting with the um, Asian session, which was coming right off the Japan. And then we're going to get right into Euro, right? So this is going to be Euro session from all the way from here to about 5 a.m., right? You got all of these news. So let's break down key down to key news here real quick. So we're going to have um, the Euro CPI. So that's going to come in. That's going to have an impact on that currency. Of course, JPY will also have the Bank of Japan given some hawkish or maybe Dover's comments on the currency based on the rate decision. So even though if they come in at negative 10%, it might have a negative impact on that particular currency. And then there might be some positive Bank of Japan um, conference comments coming afterwards, which may fade the initial weakness of that currency. But either way, it's going to be very, very highly volatile on that particular pair. So you're going to be very, it's going to be very, very tricky. And it's going to, you're going to need to be very, very careful on that uh, the particular currency on Thursday night, Eastern time for Jap Japanese pen, uh, Japanese yen pair across all those pairs. You want to be very, very careful. Um, you want to be very selective. I would say select the best pair setup and then just pick one or two. Don't go across major, don't, do, in other words, be very, very selective on your Japanese cross pairs so that you get the best setup and hopefully you have a very good strategy and a risk or control, money management control that can help prevent or help recover if you get into a bad trade and it goes the other way, which we're gonna expect some high volatility going up, down, up and down, could be double whipsaw, you never, you never, never know. So you gotta be very, very careful, okay? So that'll be it for the Asian session and London session. And then we get into New York session later on that morning. Um, let me go ahead and highlight that right here, down here. So that would be the New York session. And in the New York session, we're gonna have CAD GDP. We're gonna have 
the U.S. core PCE, which is the price consumer index, which is another indicator of CPI or inflation. And then you're going to have the employment costs. And then, of course, you have Chicago PMI and revised consumer report. All of this is just going to basically move the currency, right? So you got CAD, GDP, and then you got the USD, and this is definitely going to move the currency. So again, you got um, Thursday up here, and then you got Friday is going to be wrapping it up, and it's going to be very, very hot. Also, before Thursday, you got Wednesday. So Wednesday is going to be hot. Thursday is going to be hotter, and Friday is just going to be just as hot. Tuesday is going to be kind of warming up, right? Tuesday is going to be warm up, and Monday is going to be trap day. I can tell you that right now, the way it's going to be set up. So whatever happened on Monday, which I would wait to see at the end of the day to see if you got any good trade setup that's going to happen for the rest of the week, because the currency that can be going down on Monday actually could be going up Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for the rest of the week, or the currency that's going up on Monday, looking like it's going up, could actually get trapped to go down for Tuesday, pull back on Wednesday, and then go back on Thursday and Friday even lower. So you got to be aware of those traps on Monday. You call that Monday trap day. So make sure you take a look and be very, very patient and selective on your trades. All right. I hope that was helpful. That is how we look at it from a fundamental perspective. We mark our calendar. We mark which currency we expect to see those particular setups. And then we'll go our charts and then we kind of plan on trade. So with that being said, let me go ahead and switch over to the charts. And we're going to go through all the charts. I'm going to give you my higher time bias. Um, this is very, very helpful for those who are swing traders. And also for those who are day traders, scalpers may not be as useful as this unless you're just looking for to know if you are going to be a counter trend scalping or you're going to be trending scalping based on the higher time perspective. And the higher time perspective, we're going to be looking at the daily. So let me go ahead and pull up the daily. And we're going to start from the dollar index. We'll look at the correlated, uncorrelated pairs, and then we get right into the regular forest pairs, looking at it from a supply and demand zone and market structure perspective. Again, this is very, very helpful from a swing trade trader perspective. If you're a swing trader, this is very, very right up your alley. If you're a day trader, this is very good to help you with your bias to understand to look what you're looking for in terms of bullish or bear a sentiment to higher time supply and demand zone, okay? So as you can see here, looking at the dollar, we got a very high swing, all-time high there. We got an all-time swing low here. We came right up to here. We almost did a full 180 of this swing, but we didn't, we touched that. And then the dollar came all the way back down to this swing and basically did a 100% of that um, swing here swing low, swing, swing high up here. And this is right now in that particular range as we're right now at 100% of this retracement up here, okay? So what we're looking for right now, let me zoom in. Um, in fact, let me just go to the four hours and drop that down. Let me go back to the data real quick. Sorry about that. Just to let you guys know, we're right in our key, key demand area right there. That is a very key demand zone of where this particular currency is located right now. Okay, so let me go ahead and mark that up. And then we have a very good key um, supply zone up here. So this is the very, very high of the supply zone. And this is the very, very low of our demand zone. Okay. So let me go ahead and remove that. Let me go ahead and go down to the four hour real quick and take a closer look at what we're seeing with the dollar. Okay. So as you can see here, the dollar from this swing high, then that swing low, then that swing high, we did not take out that high. And if we basically came back in the downtrend and basically hit this key demand area. So if you were able to go um, short on your USD last week, you probably got some really good opportunity as the dollar was strengthened and then it kind of just ranged for a few days. Okay. Um, so let's take a look and see exactly what's happening and what we need to see happen. 
Okay, so obviously right here, you can see we're basically in a downtrend channel, right? And we're basically at a very key area if we're looking to break out of that daytime four hour channel. Also, with that being said, you can see we're right about here. We got a very good supply area there. Obviously, this is a very good supply area way up here. And then we got a little bit of a small supply area up here, right at the order block. And then we have a very good strong demand area down below here. Okay. So what we need to see, and we, this is what we need to see because we actually don't know exactly what's going to happen until after the move has happened. And we can say if once it do X or Y, it is most likely going to do this and that. Okay. So we have this low of the market structure as we created a high, and then we created a low, and then we came back up here, but we did not take out that high. So right now, we've basically been in this range. We haven't taken out this high, and we haven't taken out this low. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and mark that up. We got a high, and we got a low. What we need to see for this pair to go up, which, I'm going to assume we are going to be bullish on a dollar for the simple fact that we do have the FOMC rate decision coming in next week, which is expected to raise interest rate, right? And we are right now at a very key area of demand area, which we did not break. And we came back up here and we did a pullback. However, we've been stalling. I'm looking to go long on dollar meaning I'm looking to sort your USD, pound USD, on USD, and USD, if we can see a break of this higher frame right here. I need to see the break of that for me to go bullish on a dollar to confirm that. And then I'll be looking to take that trade once I get a break and retest on that upper range of about 101,625. Um, However, right now, the dollar is currently on the lower end of this frame right now. If we get a break and retest to the downside, then I would be looking to short-term trade Euro USD and pound USD long, therefore shorten the dollar back down to this particular level. I can also tell you this, if we come down to this particular level, it is a very high likelihood that the dollar is going to continue to be bearish and therefore go down even further. And the FOMC rate decision won't even make a difference, which does not fundamentally and accurately make sense because a strengthened dollar um, with, the, with, with the rate increase expected, that should strengthen the dollar. However, the market's going to the market's going to be right and the market's going to do whatever it's going to do. We just have to look for clues. Okay. So if that wasn't straightforward, well, that's because the market is never logical, right? It's an irrational market for me to tell you it's going to go long because I just have a feeling it's not accurately and it doesn't help me. And then it doesn't help you, but we have to look for clues in terms of market structure. Okay. So just to kind of clarify, I'm looking for the break on this upper range. Once I see the break on this upper range, this will give me a change of character, break of structure to the upside. We are on right now currently to the downside. I will look for other confluences. I'll look for other tool to see if we're gonna get a break of that. We do have an uh, imbalances and a fair value gap here, but we also have one here and we got several of them up here, right? If you were to draw a fib from this swing high to this swing low, it really makes sense for the dollar to come here at least to this 50% mark, which is right where another key supply area, I'm gonna put a different color there, where a very good key supply area is located, okay? And that would be a very good case for the dollar to come up there to, mitigate, I mean, a little bit into this premium zone area 
to be bullish, to be bearish then. This is where I would really ideally like to go short in the dollar and therefore go along for the dollar and euro. And basically we'll just be in this now continuous downtrend, which we are now, right? So that's gonna be very, very tricky. It's something I would suggest you to look to see if you're gonna be seeing the same thing, if you agree with that, to see if you're looking for the break of the dollar going back up, or if you're looking for the dollar to go back down to this key supply area and then continue to break. So we'll be watching this very, very closely. Again, this is in a very key area right now where it's, it's been in this range this whole week, been up and down, but I'll be curious to see if we're gonna get that break up there and then we get that break and retest so that we can go up. So for now, I am looking bullish and I would like to see the break of that for us to come up to this demand area, FOMC rate decision, and then sometime after the rate decision, we'll start to go down, right? Because that's what I'm going to be thinking for the rest of the 2023, uh, the Fed will now start to pause, raise interest rates after FOMC rate decision on May 3rd. I'm not looking for any more rate decision increase. Of course, that could change based on what the Fed says in the FOMC minutes but everything is pointing to no more interest rate increase after the next interest rate increase on May 3rd. So therefore in June, July, we'll be looking for more of a pause and then getting into the Fed pivot. Therefore, it'd be seeing a weakening of the dollar. And therefore I'm looking for the later half of the second quarter into the third quarter as the markets start to rally back up, which is the S&P and the indices market, which we're gonna get into right now. So let's look at that. I'm going to S&P 500. And let's see, go to the daily. And you can see where the market is, has been doing for the last, let me see, last year and a half. Here you can see up there from this particular swing high, historical high, we came all the way back down. We came down to this swing high. And then we came in this area right here, which we have not been able to take out that high, right? We came up to this particular supply zone right here, and we've been in this range. And we've been in that range since December of 2022, okay? So right now, the market on S&P 500 indices, which is inverse correlated to the dollar, we've been peaked up here, we've been peaked up here, we came back down, came back up, came back down, and we're right back at this particular supply zone again. I'm expecting the market to be bearish, and therefore, I'm expecting this to happen. We're gonna drop, hit this area, we're gonna come right back down here, and I think that is going to be the FOMC rate decision next week. That's going to be the driving catalyst to push this market back down. Uh, the market was pretty much prematurely too bullish and thinking that the Fed are going to pause interest rate maybe a little bit too early, okay? So once we come back down, that is where I want to be going bullish, okay? So if you were to do it like this, I'm expecting the market to come into this area, which is in my discount area. And this is where I want to be looking to go bullish. I don't think we're going to break this. And I don't think we're going to go down to this historical level. I think this is pretty much the low of the market as we had a very, very, very clear correction of a good 27, 28% correction of this bear market, which is the average between 30, 27, uh, 24 to about 34%, which is the average of a correction, of a bear correction. That's it, okay? And I think we bottomed out right here and we're starting to be in this range. I think we're gonna come down one more time in this range. And then for the, after going into the end of May and into June, I think we're gonna start to rally back up. And the key point for me here for that rally is that we're gonna to need to see the break 
of this particular zone. And I think you guys would agree with that. With that break, we'll be able to determine are we going to be bullish? If that's going to be the sentiment of this right here to put us back into a bull rally. Once we get that break, again, which I think it's going to be after the FOMC, once we get that break, we're going to be in a bull rally. And then you're going to hear the market being excited. We're going to be in a bull rally market. And therefore, with that being said, inverse correlated DSY will begin to fall. Okay. Okay. So then a lot of people for 1K would be excited. And then the market is starting to recover. Inflation is coming down. Unemployment is a little bit high and things like that. That is all fundamentally the sentiment of this bull rally. Right now, I don't think we're there yet. So I think there's going to be a little bit more correction. Again, I can be totally off base and I have no clue what I'm talking about <laughs> and I can be completely wrong, right? But if that's the case, that's okay. I'll trade it if we get that break, right? That's gonna be the key point for me. We see that break and we get this up here, we get a retest, guess what? I see a little bit more hesitation there. I'm not gonna go along. And this is gonna be the breakup structure that I'm gonna be looking to say, okay, maybe we are in a bull rally earlier than expected, okay? So that's where I'm at right now. I'm bearish on indices um, as a result, also with being bullish on the dollar short term, but long term, I will be bearish on the dollar and I will be bullish on indices, including S&P 500, okay? Let's look at the other inverse correlated pair, which is gold. And let me go ahead and hide these on there to make it very clear. Let's go back to the daily. As you can see from a daily perspective, we were looking very, very good at these particular historical record high, which we hit it here and we hit it here and we almost hit it there. Right. So that came very close for gold, which we will come back. Right. So that was in 2020. And then this was the um, March 2022 with the Russian Ukraine situation. Then we came back, we pulled back up, we came, we came all the way back up there. So now that we hit this particular area, right, which I will call the this area, the supply zone right here. This is the very key supply zone area. And this is a very key demand zone area right here, very key demand zone area. And there is a small minor key supply um, demand zone there, but I don't know if we're gonna go this low, but I am definitely bearish. I'm bearish on gold and I'd like to see gold get to about right there, see the market reactions and see if we get a break and retest to go this low, right? That would be as low as I would expect it to see the, um, the dollar, I mean, gold go down to, right? So that is the swing of this market here and go down to about 100%. I don't think we're going to be there. This is about the 50% mark right there. So this right here would be in our discount zone of the swing, right? So I think we're in this, on this upper trend right here. If you were to look at it from a channel perspective, this is looking to be set up really, really nicely. Look at that channel, right? So I think we are creating, we could just create that higher, higher in this channel. I think we're going to come all the way down. We're going to get this change of character. I think we're gonna get that break, change of character there. But I think we're just gonna come down to about this, in this area zone, and then that's it. That's gonna be the rest of the, um, the bear market for the gold, and then expect to be a rally along with the, um, the, the indices, as well as the dollar weakness. And we're gonna get back to this historical high of uh, the gold market of 2075. And I think we're just gonna keep continue going higher for the remainder of 2023. That is my outlook for the remainder of 2003, which is a very, very long outlook, right? But just to kind of make it short term, looking at the four hours, I can tell you right now, gold had been 
if you can see this right here, gold has created that higher highs, higher low, higher lows, higher highs. We had a high, we came back, created a higher low. And for some reason, we just cannot create, well, obviously we could not break that high and create another higher high, right? So therefore, it looks like at this point, what we only got is a lower high, okay? And then what we need to see is a break of this particular structure, which it looks like we did. And we are most in the change of character, the demand, demand area. And we are looking very, very bearish right now. Gold is looking very, very bearish. So let me go ahead and put this, um, some key areas here. So we got the supply area that's right there. And then we have Iowa demand zone, which is down there. And we got another one about right there. Okay. So I am looking for the market to continue bearish, right? To at least that mark right there. Okay. And this right here would be lower than the 50% mark, which is about right there of our swing, swing high, swing low, or swing low, swing high of the market. Once we get into our discount zone, this is when I'm trying to look to buy here. And if not, I'm definitely looking to buy there, okay? Because again, I'm also gonna be looking for intermarket correlation with the DSY to see if we get a, start to see a weakness in the DSY. But as of right now, this is looking very, very weak. Um, gold market has been falling since Thursday, and it looks like we're finally getting that breakout of that trend right there. And we are creating, um, it looked like we got ahead, maybe a head and shoulder, but either way, we could not, from a market structure standpoint, create another higher high. We just created the lower high, and it looks like we're breaking that lower structure, the lower low, to go down now into a downtrend. Right, this is what we're looking like. So this is what I'm expecting to see for the next week, one to two weeks. And I think the FOMC rate decision is going to be another catalyst to push this market down. If the FOMC rate decision increase, expected rate increase, because I don't know if they're going to, but there is a high probability it will continue to raise interest rate on the dollar. Therefore, it will weaken the um, gold even further as the bond yield is very highly correlated to uh, inverse correlated to gold i think we're going to come back down and revisit this technically right and then around june july more likely in june get ready to recover right so as you watch us every week as we provide this top-down analysis we're going to see how this play out and then again I could be completely wrong. And then all of this is nothing and it just goes up. It could happen. But if we play it, play it safely and we watch our market structure right there, you see that market structure right there. And as long as it doesn't invalidate this area, then we are definitely going bullish, bearish through our particular zone. Okay. So Obviously, we're going to be trading this every day, taking a look very, very closely to see how this week sets us up. And if we see more um, bearishness in gold, which our artificial intelligence will give us the extra confluence predictive nature of how gold market will continue to re react and predict for the remainder of the week, we'll continue to be bearish on gold and therefore look to be the strength on, on dollar. Very, very key, important. I like to see how that comes up. And um, hopefully we can continue to, to hold this uh, particular market here as we rejected that particular market structure. And, and if we can hold, we're gonna go down. If this market comes back up here and invalidate this area, then we're coming back up. And therefore everything I just talked about from a bearish perspective has now flipped the script. But we will see that with evidence of the breakup structure coming back up here to now retest that high. That's gonna be very, very key on your guys' analysis, okay?
All right, with that being said, let's go look at the Bitcoin market before I get into regular Forex pairs. Go back to the daily. And, and I think you guys have, if you guys have been following my channel here, my analysis, I think you guys have already known that I have called the, the bottom market about right here. And I don't think we're going any lower than 15. Um, what was that? We were as low as 15,450. So I don't think we're gonna go that low anymore. I think this is the bottom of that market. I'm excited to see what I'm seeing right now in terms of the, the rally of Bitcoin as it continues to go up, which is really, really good. Um, let me go ahead and mark the key supply area, obviously right there. And we're gonna have another one about right there. And we're at a key supply area right there, okay? Now our demand area for Bitcoin is about right there. Okay, which is the two thousand, let's say two thousand dollar market, two thousand dollar mark. Okay. Now, what I'm looking for is continuous rally of Bitcoin, but that's not without a small correction. Okay, so if we do have a couple of imbalances, not to say that the market does follow that to the C when it comes to Bitcoin, but it's also good to see that sometimes it does, and most of the time it would. So with that being said, there is a, going to be a nice correction on Bitcoin. I can see that coming down to at least, I would say about um, 24, let's say 24,550. I can see that happening at a very high likelihood, which is about right there. And then if we get a break, right, that's if we do, if we do break this, then we are definitely coming down to retest that $2,000 mark. And that should be about the lowest, okay? So this is definitely a high probability. To me, this is a low probability. Um, if the market continues to go, if this break this area of 24,550, 24, then we can be going lower. If this hold, and that's it, we are going, okay? Now, if we don't go there and we end up going lower, then that is probably where the bottom of the market going all the way back to 2000 would be a very, very big correction since um, I would say March, that'd be a very big correction. However, I don't think it's going to go any lower than that right here from that swing high. I think it's, if it goes all the way here, that is about the lowest it's gonna go and give us a, you know, gives you a better an opportunity to buy, right? But I definitely see us going back to about 24,550 at a minimum, but either way, whether it goes here or whether it goes here, guess what? We're going, we're going up because the next mark, the next, if this, if this right now, we're, we're seeing a little bit of, uh, a correction, we're gonna see a little bit of a change of character if it breaks, then we're going down here. If this breaks, we then we're going down here, okay? So that would be number one, and this would be number two. If this area breaks right now where it's at. If it breaks that, we're going down. If it holds, then we're going up right there. So that's gonna be the break of structure, following market structure to tell us from a timing perspective, if it breaks, we're coming down here, and if it shows some reaction and if it holds, then we're coming back up. But if it breaks, then we're coming down here to this $2,000 mark and we're gonna go up from there. Either way, these are good areas to start looking for where we're buying, right? Now, going into about June, late May, we're gonna see another rally, right? We're gonna see this rally and this is gonna be the next mark right here. 40, 40K, okay? We made it all the way up to about 20, uh, let's say 31. We made it up to 31K. This is the next stop. And then we're gonna see a little small correction. And then the next stop, that's right. We're looking at about 50K, okay? 
So I'm giving you guys the uh, projection of where I'm seeing the market um, going for the, I would say the next three to six months. I have 40K, okay? So after we make this correction, we're gonna make a little small correction from 31,000, we're gonna hit about 24,550 if it goes down that low. And at the very least 20K, which is 24, 550k. So this is 20k. This is be the very lowest lowest probability, but I think that are going to be the line in the sand, and that'll be it. And that'll be the last time we see that low, unless we hold at 24,550. Awesome. Then we're making it to 40 40k. We'll do a little bit of correction. We'll take a look at when that happens, and then we're going back up to 50k. Okay. So this is going to be probably the remainder of uh, 2023 right here, right? So that's going to be where it's going to be going as we get into 2024 with the Bitcoin halving. And that's going to probably take it to at least back to its high of around, it was 69K. So I'm going to put, just put around it 70K, 2024 and beyond. Isn't that exciting? More to come. So let's look for that correction on Bitcoin as it's starting to come down. If you go down to the four hours real quick, just to kind of show you exactly what I'm talking about from a market structure standpoint. This is that break of structure right there on a higher time frame. It just did a break of structure there on a lower time frame. So it breaks that <clears throat> right here. Then on a higher time frame, we are definitely going lower. And this would be the 24,550. Um, and this would be the, um, the $2,000 mark. Okay. But that's is what we need to see. We need to see if this is going to continue to break. And if it breaks, we'll come in here. Then it's going to range a little bit. And as long as that holds, then we're going up. But if it fails, then we're going down. And then we're going to bounce around here real quick before we start back going back into the rally. Okay. Very, very key, important, make that note. So these are, if you trade Bitcoin or if you're a hodler investor of Bitcoin, these are the prices you want to look now and you want to maybe buy a little bit there. If it drops, buy a little bit more. If it drops even more, buy a little bit more there if you're, if you're a hodler. If you are a, a trader, then this is where you want to follow my, uh, my analysis and see if you're seeing the same thing. If you see some more weakness and it breaks this structure. We're coming down here. You can buy a little bit more, us average it, or you can see and wait for confirmation and buy the breakout coming back up after the rejection or wait to come down here. If it does break and see the reaction here and buy the rejection coming back up. Okay, either way, Bitcoin is looking bearish right now. And that's my sentiment on Bitcoin. Okay, let's go to Euro dollar. All right, Euro dollar. Okay, so Euro dollar, we have came all the way to this supply zone, which I liked. This is pretty good. As you can see, it just came right in the nick of that supply zone and then came back and it's starting to pull back a little bit, which is awesome, okay? Now, that's if that swing high right there and that swing low, and we do have this swing high came back at that swing low, and it's looking kind of bullish. Right now, it's looking kind of bullish um, as it came up, bouncing off it here. But so what we need to see is, is it going to take out this high, high right? Because this is inverse correlated to the dollar. so. If the dollar is, is, if I'm bullish in dollar, that means I'm, that means I'll be bearish on your dollar, which I am, right? So I do not foresee us breaking that high. If we do, then my bearishness bias will change, right? Right now, I'm looking for the break of that to go lower. So, and this is my target down here. That's what I'm looking for to see your dollar come down to about 
413 pips all together as a line in the sand before we go higher, okay? That's what I'm looking for. But with that to happen, um, I need to see the dollar, your dollar break that, that, um, that structure there. Because right now it can go into a little, little bit of a range, but as long as it doesn't take out that high, and if it holds and it starts to come back down, then I think the FOMC rate decision would be the catalyst to take this back down to about 1.06. Um, it could come as low as, um, let me see, about 1.07. Okay. Either way, from this swing low to this swing high, my 50% mark is right there. So as soon as I break that 50% mark, which is below about 1.08, then it, you know, that's when I'm looking to, to buy, to go long, okay? So that's when it's in my discount zone area. I do not want to buy the high unless I see the breakout, the breakout and I see the retest and then I'll buy the low, the pullback of this continuous trend. Because right now it is bullish on overall uptrend, but it is pulled back and has not created another higher high. It did create a lower high. What I'm trying to see if it's going to hold that lower high and get and come back and break that lower low. If we do, you got it. I'm talking in these level. Okay. That was a lot of marking. So I don't wanna don't wanna hide that marker real quick. So this is what I'm seeing. Okay. So it created that high, it created that lower low. And right now as a close of Friday, it did not create another high. I'm looking to see it does not create an equal high or break that structure because if it doesn't, guess what? That's right, I'm looking at breaking that structure and then come down, okay? And this would be my line in the sand where I'll be looking to go long on your dollar. So right now I'm bearish your dollar unless it proves me the other way and it proves me wrong. Okay, pound dollar, uh, well, it's gonna be the same correlation as your dollar, right? They're both in inverse correlated to the dollar. As of right now, let me see, just to mark up my structure here, it plays right into that supply zone very, very nicely. Um, we have a very key demand zone down here. Right? And we also have some imbalances down here. Okay, so there is some very good key areas where it could break and mitigate these for value gaps. I am looking for more bearishness on pound USD. As you can see, we have that right there. We have a little bit of a slightly break, but I'm gonna call that equal high, right? Kind of gave us a nice little double top pattern but we have not confirmed to break that particular structure, right? So even though on pound dollar, we have a double M pattern, we're in a very key supply area. This is very, very important. We're at a very key supply area of um, pound dollar from a higher time perspective, okay? And this is our demand zone. Now, since I'm bearish, bullish on a dollar, I'm looking for inverse correlation to pound dollar. So I am looking for this to come down. But for that to happen, it has to have this break of structure. We have this break of structure, retest, we going down, right? And that's gonna be my first target right here for pound dollar. I'm looking at about 1.20. And once you get into that area, again, this is my 50% mark. And this is my discount area. And in my discount area is when I'm looking to, to buy between this swing high, swing low and this swing high, of this particular trading range. Very, very important on how I just mark that up on a structure standpoint on how we follow supply and demand zone. This is what we teach in our academy in deep detail on how you can break this down technically from a market structure standpoint to, to develop your um, timing of the market of where the price is gonna go after you fundamentally um, determine the bullish and biasness, uh, bearishness of the particular currency, okay? So pound dollar, I'm looking to be bearish. 
Um, Euro dollar, I'm looking to be bearish, but again, I got to see this, got to see this break of structure. Once I get this break of structure, and I, I would know probably by Monday exactly where this market is going to go because we did not, we did not take out this high. It did come down. Let me go very clear again. We do the tie this high. We had this low. We did not create another higher high. So this is a high, lower. It was kind of a, it was it was considered a lower high, but right now it's considered a lower low as we closed up this lower high. So I'm going to call this a lower low. If it breaks this structure, we got a change of character. We're going to be targeting that 50% and get right into our supply zone, demand zone, and then I'll be looking to go long on pound dollar. Okay, I hope that helps you with your analysis. If you're if you're bullish on pound dollar because um, what you're seeing, then hopefully you're right. But make sure you, I would suggest you to look at the DSY to see if your your bias is correct. Because if you see the DSY get strong, you may not want to consider um, going long on pound dollar and just wait for the break of this high. Don't try to catch the breakout, but catch the retest to get the confirmation. Okay. All right. The last pound dollar. Let's get a look at Australian dollar again. If I am bearish on your dollar pound dollar because I'm inverse correlated bullish on um, the dollar, this would be the same thing. Okay. So right now we had a very key, um, a very key demands on there. And this is a very key supply area. Right there. All right. This is a very good, I would say, resistance area, not so much of a supply zone there, but this is a good resistance area because this is all resistance here, supply and resistance. I don't trade off of it, but I recognize it because I know where it's it's where price action is in terms of how the market makers manipulate this. So that's why it's been touching, it's been touching us. It has not completely gone all the way down to the level that we still have an imbalance gap still left right there. Very, very important. Okay. So I think, right, based on how the market has been reacting, meaning it's been holding, holding, holding. And then just recently on the close of Friday, we did not break, finally break that high. We've been matching it, matching it. And if it looks like we come back down and we break that, yes, this is definitely coming down. However, compare this to EU and GU, this is not a really good setup, okay? Compared to EU and GU. EU and GU is at the, the high. This is right in the middle, right? And it's possibly not done yet. It is not a really good setup compared to the EU and GU. And I always strongly suggest and strongly stress to all coaching students and even other traders, you want to be very selective. Pick the edge. Pick the trade that has the edge. Pick the trade that has a very good, easy, and very clear setup. Okay? And to me, this is not a very good, easy, and clear setup. You may agree. You may disagree. And that's fine. Um, but in my opinion, this looks to be a nice flag pattern right there. And if you're looking to trade the breakout of this particular pattern right there, you may be spot on, okay? And that means you're, you're still coming up with the same bias in terms of this possibly coming back down to this particular area. And if that's how you trade, then that's okay. But at least you're still coming up to the same bias, but you're just using a different confluence. You're using trend lines and, and flag and bull flag, bell flag breakouts, which is fine. I mean, some traders are very, very successful. And if that matches your sentiment and my sentiment, then that's great. We're both gonna come to the same conclusion. And if you're gonna be looking for a different type of pattern to buy, that's fine. And I'll be looking for a different confluence to do the same thing to buy. But the key thing is we'll definitely be arriving to the same location. Hopefully we'll make the same amount of money in terms of pips, and then we'll be trading off of this key demand area, okay? Which is awesome. So I'm bearish on Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar. New Zealand dollar looking to be the 
the lead in between the two of the New Zealand dollar and the pound dollar in terms yeah. of already starting to show signs of bearishness, which is awesome, right? This is our key supply area up here and down there is our key demand area. And if you can see right there, that was a high, that was the lower low. It failed to beat and it take out that high, therefore it created a lower high and look what it did. It's looking like it's starting to come down, which makes it even a better setup or a better sign than Australian dollar for its case to come down to this particular zone, right? Very, very key. I don't think it's going to go any lower than this, but it could. It could come all the way down here. It's got to be very, very careful. Um, anything for me would be invalid for um, to continue the downtrend. So I would consider this a valid, invalid zone um, for these, the trade bias. I think this is eventually going to go up and we're going to go and break this high and we're eventually going to be in this area. This right here will be the remainder of 2023. But for this to happen, we need a DXY to be weak, right? And right now I'm bullish on DXY. Therefore, that's why I think we got some more downside for um, NCD USD, just like we do with odd USD, US, USD and pound USD. Okay. So again, between NCD USD and odd USD, EU and GU, you can see which one you would probably want to trade. And I can tell you EU and NU, AU and NU, it's probably not the two trades you want to trade between any of the do dollar majors for a possible sell trade. I think EU and GU would be a better setup. If you wanted to get into this trade, you should have got in right here. And I think you would agree with me. Or right here. Those would have been two great areas to be selling. Okay. So we're in you as with AU and bearish, looking for more downside to those particular pairs. Okay. Now let's switch over to the correlated dollar crosses, which is euro dollar, pound dollar, and dollar yen. Looking at these two particular pairs. Oh, these particular pairs, let's start with um, dollar CAD, right? We got a very good key supply area up here. We got a very good key supply up, up here. Let's look at our demand zone. Obviously it's very clear, which Sonar Lab does a pretty good job indicator wise on trading view to really mark up from a smart money perspective and market structure, which is pretty awesome. So if you were able to um, buy dollar CAD, Last week, awesome. You got some really good trade set up because that is a very key area of where you would want to go long. And it looked like it got more upside to go, right? And the reason why I say that is because we haven't market, made our mark yet. We haven't reached destination yet. It's still right there in the middle. So I think this has more upside to go. So I'm bullish on dollar cat. So, I think we've got more upside to go. I think we're going to go back to this level. And I do not believe we are going to break this. If we do, guess what? This would be our destination right there. Right? So those are the two areas where I'm looking to go short. If I was to think about when to short, if you're looking to short dollar cad, I wouldn't short it until it gets in those particular area around 1.38 for part one or as high as 1.40 for part two before I start to go bearish, okay? Are we going to go down there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. But that's not if until we reach up to and mitigate this area one more time, okay? And that's what the dollar strength, right? I think the FOMC weight decision is going to be a catalyst to bring this up there. But eventually, we are definitely going to come down there. And this would be my... POI destination number one for the demand zone down here. But we're going to definitely see these level in 2023. And this is my this is my uh, prediction on the DXY eventually being weak. The OFMC rate decision pause on interest rate of dollars. Not going to be any more interest rate. And that first 
And that first pause in June is definitely going to be that catalyst. It's just going to weaken the dollar and cash is going to overpower the dollar. And this thing's going to be tanking, right? But right now, I'm bullish on pound dollar, okay? And I think there's a little bit more trade to go to about mm, a nice 225 pips. Um, if we get there before FOMC rate decision, that'd be crazy because then we potentially could be going higher to about... 450 potential, but if we just slowly make our way up there and then FOMC just takes it up here, then that'd be as about as far as we're gonna go, right? Okay, so don't be afraid if you see this pull back a little bit in range, but we do have a lot of fair value gap to mitigate and this is a very good, strong supply zone. Hope that was helpful. Okay, you will chef. And if you look at this, this is, Freaking awesome. Look at that. It just completely from here all the way back down to that particular area, which is pretty good. Okay. So let me go ahead and hide this marking for you real quick to make it very, very clear for you. So on a, on a higher time frame, as you can see, we're right back to that demand zone right there. Isn't that awesome? So if you were to trade this up here and you sold it down here, this would be in a very, very clear area to take profit. And you would have had a very awesome trade from here to here. Nice 1,260 pips. Tell you what, that would have not been an area to complain, right? But now you're at that area, then what? Is it gonna keep going down? Or is it gonna bounce and reject off that area, right? Just like it's doing right now. Because what you need to see if it's gonna break and retest. But for this to happen, we need DXY to do what? with the dollar Swiss French. Well, we need a dollar to be weak. And right now, I am not bearish on the dollar yet. I'm still bullish, okay? I'm still bullish on the dollar. So if I'm bullish on the dollar, then that means I'm bullish on this correlated pair, and I am, okay? So I am looking for this particular area to hold. That is what we need to see this week. And if, it, and if it holds, which I am expecting it to, then we're gonna be looking for a bounce off of this particular area. And if we do, where is the most likely area to still be going? This should be going to the next supplier right there. That can be one area right here. This can particularly be a small area. I doubt if we come all the way to this supply area, that would be a very long dollar strength, and I don't think we're going to go up that that high. I think we're definitely going to come to this particular area right here. This would be my high probability about 0.94. This would be my low probability of 0.96, and then after that, that's it. So in other words, I'm looking for you Swiss French to come up, see that right there about right there. Hopefully that will be around that FOMC rate decision. That'd be the catalyst that takes it all the way up here. We're looking at a potential. And the reason why I'm spending a little bit more time on here, because this is a better trade setup than dollar CAD. Dollar CAD is already on its way up to about 225 pip. Here, we're looking at a potential 439 pip to a very nice key supply area. So between dollar switch France and the dollar CAD in terms of correlated dollar pair, dollar switch France, if I were to have choose between the two, in my comfortability, dollar CAD may be your favorite pair, but between the two in terms of setup, I don't care about favorite pair. It's about the best, best setup in terms of quality. To me, dollar switch France looking great, just look like a great 400 and when I had that at about 450 pit potential trade, just looking really, really good. But this is going to have to be the catalyst here. It needs a hold, right? But And I'll be looking to go long. This would be a good trade setup, okay? Um, and then once we get there, I like to see this hold around this area, around this key supply area. We may peak up just a little bit to do some more liquidity grab. And that could be a ball buster for you if you have the stop loss here. Um, but and if that do, don't be afraid to get in. But if you cost average this in, just to be another area to go short. Because when that happens, whether we get here or whether we get here, we're going to be at a very nice area for me 
from a premium zone perspective, to bring this bad boy down, okay? I'm looking to see this come all the way back down and we, um, we break this structure here, we retest and we'll come all the way back down, okay? To me, this would be the 2023 move for the remainder of 2023, right there. But in the meantime, we're gonna see a little bit more um, backside. Again, I can be completely wrong and we can go now. So that is what we're gonna see. And if you're trading this, make sure you see and look for those evidence for us to support the buy side or buy opportunity for your share before you short, okay? Very, very, impo very important to see. But with, other than that, we are definitely, um, um, I'm definitely bullish on dollar switch francs before we come back down to this very key area of supply. Um, right there would be 400 pip, but I think it's gonna pull back a little bit. Um, this is bearish overall from a higher time perspective. And then this pullback would be nothing more of a pullback, just like this one up here was, just like this one's gonna be for the overall downside as we take out this low eventually, okay? This is what I'm talking about. Where this, where this is the, um, the downtrend, and this is on a daily. I'm going to turn on to the weekly real quick and show you what I'm talking about from a, from a higher time perspective. This is what I see the pair doing, right? So we were swing high, came all the way in at this right here. I think we get, you know, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower low. I think we got one more lower high, and then we're just going to continue going. This about connecting the dots. Isn't that awesome? Just connect the dots like a fifth grader. <laughs> just connect the dots and just play it. But you got another market, right, in terms of what it takes to break this and why would it pull back and what sign to look for and what signs of confirmations of market structure to be able to support your the long bias or your short bias. Very, very important. Other than that, I'm long short, uh, I'm long your Swiss friends um, temporarily pull back to this particular zone. Hopefully we see a nice retest of this particular supply zone and then I'll be looking to sort this bad boy for sure. Okay, next one, dollar switch France. Okay, this is on the daily. Yeah, just <laughs> this one. I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm, I'm liking this one because this is my ultimate line in the sand right here. I want this dollar switch, I want this euro dollar so bad. This, this demand area right here, this is so key. We are coming down to this area and I want it so bad, right? And it's just stubborn. It's, it's going to come down, but it's just stubborn. So from a short-term perspective, we got this supply area right here, right? Even though we got another supply area up here. To me, this is a very high, high probability. We're going to come back up here, right? Very high probability. So I think we're going to come back up here. This is a very low probability. But I think we're going to come out into this area. And then after that, boom, we're going to come back down, right? So as long as we do not take out this high and we hold, then we're coming back down. So we're looking at another potential about 300, let's say, let's say realistically, we're looking at about a good 200 to 300 pip, 300 pip possibility on dollar yen. So I think we still got a little bit more upside. As you can see, this trend line has been able to hold right there. So this shift the market structure is supporting that. Right there, right there. So I like to see that come up there. Once we get that area right there, you guys can follow me along. You guys can see that. That is what I'm looking for. And I'm looking forward to see it come back down. I don't want to see it come to that area, reject, hold, and come back down. But right now, I think we're on our way in that area. Okay. So that's what I'm seeing right now. I'm looking for a little bit more upside to um, dollar yen. So I'm bullish 
dollar yen to about right there that can su to support that channel right there. I think it's gonna connect the dot right there, which is pretty good because that's in right out, like I said, it's in our supply zone right there, right? And this, this is all supply right here. Got a little bit of supply there, but all in this area, this is where you wanna short supply. This is all supply, okay? And you got a little small demand area right there. You got a little bit small demand area right there. And you got a big major one down here, big major one down here. So with that being said, then eventually we, we will be, um, once we get in this area. So let's, let's say right now for this week and next week, I'm looking for all bullishness on dollar yen. Um, I'm looking at the go up. That means, yeah, it's going to probably be a combination of dollar strength as well as yen weakness. Uh, so that means there is a possibility that yen could be weak this week. And therefore we could see some upside on the dollar yen and possibly yen crosses. I don't know, let's see. I'm bullish on the dollar yen, let's look at the yen crosses. All right, let's look at EJ first. See if you guys are in any of these crosses. Wow, this is pretty um, right back to the highs. Nice. Okay, so as you can see right here, this is going to be very, very tricky going into this, go to the weekly. Wow, I don't think it's going to go this freaking high, but it is really, really tricky because we're at extreme high now. But there's always a possibility we could come back to up here. Always a possibility. Okay, so right now, we go back to the daily. Right now, we're at an all time high, and um, not all time high, but we haven't been this high since um, December of 2014. Okay. And then before that, we haven't been higher than that since 2008, okay? But that doesn't mean we can't go any higher, but that does mean that I am not looking to trade this and go high. This is not where you want to buy, okay? Now, a lot of people will say, well, if you bought, you should have bought down here, but this is not an area where you want to go ahead and start buying a selfie when you're at an all-time high. Right, call it all time. Uh, ATH, <laughs> all time high, right? You, this, is, this is one of those pairs when you get into an all time high or an all time low, you don't want to keep buying and keep buying and keep buying because it's only be a matter of time before you get a slam dunk. The pressure is on the sell side, not the buy side. The pressure to buy was down here. Press of buy down here. So, in other words, the demand to buy was down here. The demand to buy would go along here. The, de the demand up here was the short. Demand up here was the short. The demand up here was the short. What do you think the demand is up here? And if you think the demand up here was the short, you are correct. If you did the demand up here was destroyed, you are also correct. Because that's exactly what it did right here, right there, and right there. Okay, and it did that twice here. But that doesn't mean that it can go higher. It could. It just means that I'm not willing to participate because I'm looking to be short at this point, especially when you're at some historical high. You're coming to an extreme market condition from this swing here to this swing, okay? You're also coming into extreme market conditions from this swing to that swing. That is 100% retracement, right? So I'm not in EJ, and I guess what? 
I'm not participating in this trade either. As I am going to stick to being bearish on this particular trade, I would have been bullish down here, I would have been bullish down here, which I believe I did call it up here. And I said, it can come up here and if it breaks that, we're coming up here. But this right here, this is when I wanna to start to become bearish. The other reason why is because in my trading plan, it tells me any time that we're above equilibrium of a particular trading range, especially on a higher time frame, like this one on a daily, this is a swing low, this is a swing high, that's my equilibrium. The market is going to rebalance here and the market is going to rebalance from the higher time frame of the weekly. Going to the weekly. Talking about this swing low or this swing high or this swing low or that swing high, right? The equilibrium up here is between right there. The equilibrium of right here, it's about right there. So the balance for me, it's definitely gonna come in at least 50% of this trading range. It's gonna at least come back to this 50% of this trading range. And it's definitely gonna come back to this 50% of this trading range, just like it did here, just like it rebalanced here, okay? So that's what I'm talking about in terms of my sentiment and my taste of why I am not participating to go long and I'm looking for signs to go short. So in other words, in this particular case for EJ and this other pairs, if I were to pick, to pick one or the other, I'm gonna show you which one I would rather pick, but I am not picking this one and I'll be waiting for a confirmation of break of structure, right? Because this could potentially inch up higher, inch up higher, it could inch up higher, it could inch up higher. And you're trying to play this and you're trying to time this. And then all of a sudden you get a banking intervention or something crazy like Euro or something, whatever. And it just starts to go lower, okay? I'm just not gonna participate in this, other uh, participate in going long. Everything in terms of fair value gap is showing that it's showing signs of pressure of demand to go lower and therefore I'm bearish. However, if I were you, which I would do, I would be looking for a, a low. I would be looking for that. I'm looking for a low. I'll be looking for a retest to make sure it doesn't take out that high. I'll be looking for a lower high. And once I see this sign and I see this sign, then I'm ready to go bearish. But right now I just wouldn't put a sell just because I see this at a high and I'm at a supply because it can go higher. It can go against me. It can continue to go against me. It can continue to flow it against me before it does that. My sign is here. That's my symbol. This is my signature. If I see this, I need to see a either a double top or I need to see a lower high. And then after that, I need to see the choke or the change of character. I'm okay with getting in here for a light trade, but this is my clear evidence right there. So I can see we're going very, very clear market structure change with a shift of market structure, okay? Right here, is this a shift in market structure? Hell no. That's telling me that's in an uptrend. And I tell you what, I don't want to get into a buy and participate. I'm late to the party. You would too if you were to buy there. This is where you're on time for the party. This is when you're early for the party and you're even having a greater time because I'm late and the party is almost over or it could be over any time, right? And I definitely don't want to be in a party when the cops come in late after the party had been rocking for quite some time. <laughs> you like that analogy? <laughs> but if that helps you, I hope that makes sense. But I don't want to be, I don't want to, I don't want to buy late into the party. I'm sorry. I'm just not going to participate in this game. Okay. So I'm short. I'm looking for signs of short. And right now I am not ready to get into any positions until I see more signs, um, until I see more confluence. But other than that, I'm bearish on e EJ. Okay. So GJ. This is a little bit more better um, in terms of structure, right? I can see very, very clear structures here. This is all supply right there. This is strong, strong supply area, okay? 
And with that being said, this is very, very strong demand area right there. So now that I draw that up for you and you see it, and you see no signs of any shift, any break of structure, what trend are we in? This is a very clear uptrend, okay? Very clear uptrend, especially when we have a potential supply zone sitting way above it, right? Of course, we have some orders, liquidity orders, right? Let's point out the liquidity orders. That's a resistance, that's a resistance, that's a resistance. You think we can come up here closely to that resistance level just to manipulate some more traders? Absolutely. I don't think this trade is over. I think there is a little bit more bearishness in um, pound dollar. Now, correct me, this did come down and it did create this low. And then price came right back up there. This is where the current price is at. This is where it created that low on Friday. Guess what? We have a low. Thank you. It created that for me. Price is up here now. I want to see you come back here, but I don't think it will. I think it's going to come back up here. It's going to ride it, try to take out this high, and I think it's going to continue up a little bit more. But if it doesn't take out that high, meaning if price right now, price came up here, this is my diagram over here. And maybe I can get away from that so I don't distract you guys, right? What I'm trying to say is that the market created this high up here. And then on one candle, it created that low. Awesome. I'll put a line right there. Okay. Now price came up here. And now I want to see it take out that high. If it doesn't take out that high and it starts to hover around here, guess what? I'm looking for signs that tell me this is going to go lower. I can get into a trade risky right there, or I can be a little conservative and wait till it breaks that structure low, and that would be a safe trade. This is not late to a party. This is actually early, which is okay, but you gotta be aware that it could be a false earliness to, to trade as this can easily bounce and come back up and take out and then get ready to break, okay? So whether you get in here or whether you get in here, I would caution you to get in here unless you know what you're doing because you can, you can cross average that out. If not, wait for confirmation, a break of that particular low because once you wait for the break, not gonna be a bad trade. I think you'd be okay with 400 and pimp. Now, of course, that's not gonna be a great as maybe 600 pip, but I think you'd be okay with a break of that structure right there, about 450 pips. Either way, you're gonna make money, right? Now, if you're trading you know, channels or flags, of course, you're probably looking for a double top, which is okay. Maybe you're looking for a break on a channel that looks like that. Hopefully it's not that, Think of a channel, maybe going to the lower time frame. Let's go to the four hour time frame and show you what I'm talking about. Because the you know pattern traders, which is okay, right? Um you try to probably trade in this particular channel, or maybe I can't even draw it right, right? Because I don't trade patterns like that. Right. You're probably waiting for that break right there, which is fine. That's the same thing as what we trade. We trade market structure. Right, you're trading, you're trading patterns. Patterns are repeatable, but patterns are not as accurate as market structure, right? They're, they're inconsistent, but they're repeatable. So you're relying on repeatability, but you're, you can run into the chance where there can be inconsistency unless you're using other confluence, okay? So this is the confluence I'm looking for. I'm looking for that break of that structure Price is right here right now, but it's just a high. Could we be taking out that high? We could. And if we do, we're going to go to that supply area. Like right? this is the confluence I'm talking about. That's the supply. This is demand. Okay. As of right now, 
there is a possibility of more bearishness on um, pound dollar. Um, this is very, very tricky. Again, as you can see, I'm kind of like um, really taking a breath here and taking some time instead of just rushing it and say, yeah, I'm bearish, but, but why, right? Trying to help you explain as I deep dive into this and help you with your analysis. I'm not trying to extend this, but I'm trying to be very, very diligent about all this trade setup to see if there's a potential trade for me to get in. And as of right now, there is no potential trade setup until I get a break of this structure, okay? However, there is a potential more trade setup. It could go higher. We're talking about another 200 pip, another possible 340 pip as we get into the middle of the supply zone. If that interests you, and if you like a rush, because you bored, because you have nothing else to do, and then you want adrenaline rush, and you like to put your money at high risk, this is your trade. Go for it. Knock yourself out. Let me watch you win and go for it, right? However, I'm not willing to be high rush. We got 52. I'm, I'm, I'll be 52 next month, and I don't want to raise my high blood pressure, and I'd rather be late to a party at this age. I'm not a really good party person. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're with me, we'll be cautious, we'll be ready, and we'll preserve our money, and we can take other trades at a very, very high risk setup. I'm, I'm, I'm more of the quality. I'll let the young guys, and if you're a young guy and you're a very adrenaline rush trader, and you like GJ, and GJ is your favorite trade, be more than happy to trade this London Dragon. Go for it. There is a little bit more upside potential I could see, but I'm not really to participate in here. Okay? All right, let's get into CAD, Jay. Um, I got this trade. I was um, I got this trade sell, which is great. It did a very good job. Um, let me see right here. Let me mark up my zones. This is right here. It's a very de key demand area. This is a key demand area right there. We got a very nice supply area right here, and we got a nice supply zone right there. I love that supply zone. Okay, so this strong supply right here. This is a supply right here. And this is the demand zone. And this is demand. I'm trying to deviate. Okay, so where are we at right now? Well, if you take a look at it, you can see we're at a little bit of a channel. Okay, we did come back from 100% um, retracement, which was from this swing low to the swing high and we came right into that swing from a Fibonacci perspective 100 percent we did not go to extreme level of that right this is on a daily and I'm talking about this if you look under four hour this is what you would have saw okay so if you were looking at a very high level then you would have saw this is also demand area this is when you should have been going by great you should have sold when you got up here or taken profit this is a nice pullback okay now there is a little bit of, I'm going to say support level, retail support level, right? For me, this is the swing low, swing high. This is my 50%, right? Do I think it's gonna come down a little bit low? It could, however, I think there is more upside to this particular pair. Let me go down to the four hour and explain a little bit further. I think the yen, these guys are not going to raise interest rate. Um, that supports the dollar yen to be bullish. All right, we got a very key high supply area way up here. Okay, this is a very key supply area up here. And you got a very key demand area right there. Okay. We are at a very key uptrend. That's it's a very clear uptrend. Low, lower highs, lower lows, lower high. We're right there right now. Okay. I am looking to see if this charge price is going to break that high or if it's going to break this low. Okay. Those are my two areas. You got the swing, you got this little high, you got this little low. If we reject and we start to come back, my eye is going to be looking here. Okay. So I'm going to look for the break. I want to look for the retest. And guess what? I'm willing to buy. 
I'm willing to buy that area, as in not buying this high. For me, this is the high. This is that overall swing high, swing low perspective, right? My equilibrium is sitting right here, okay? On a higher time frame. Obviously, we're looking at a four hour right there. But on a daily, we're looking at two dimension, all right? So if you look, come to our coaching class and we'll talk to you about the two dimension, two perspective, looking at a higher time frame on a daily and a four hour. Just looking at it from a four hour perspective, I can see this, this is going to be in an uptrend. And as we continue to, just to create a lower low, I'm looking for another lower high, lower low, lower high, lower, lower low. Um, I mean, yeah. So high, higher highs, higher low, higher highs, higher low, higher highs, higher lows. That's what I'm talking about. Higher lows, higher highs. I'm looking to get back into the supply area up here. Okay. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this extreme break of 100% on a four hour time frame. Okay. This extreme break zone is a choke, it is, is, is an extreme position for the four hour, but it's a choke on the daily. This is extreme conditions on a four hour, meaning we're now going higher because it, it'll be a choke on the daily. So that's what I'll be looking for. But if we break this lower, this low, then that means we could be creating more of a lower low, lower highs, lower lows, and we move forward in a downtrend. Therefore, I can see this coming back down and we down, and we'll, we'll get back down even lower forever, which is great. However, I don't think that's gonna happen right now. <laughs> Going back to the daily, for those who may be considering CAD JPY or getting into CAD JPY, I want you to pay attention right here one more time. This right here is the key, key area of demand that I see this pair going. Okay. This is the key, this is a key area of supply that we could potentially go. Okay. Very, very key. Between this swing high and this swing low, you're looking at the 50% mark right in the middle, right? That 50% mark. This, my friend, to our coaching students is premium. This right here is called the discount. This is where we look to buy on a higher time frame. This is where we look to sell. And right now, this is the area where you should have bought. Until it gives us a different perspective and a break of that structure, this could potentially come a little bit higher and break that 50% mark. And once again, in this supply zone, flip the script and let's get ready to go and go short. Okay. Because right now, it already made its move. So I'm not advocating that I would be considered going long. If I did, you should have went right here. Or you could have went right here. Right, it's did that high. I don't know if it's going to go any higher. I will know after it breaks that structure, but I'm not willing to participate. I should have participated in here, but I am willing to re engage in this trade because this is my key supply area. It, it will confirm to tell me it's going to go in that key supply area when it breaks that high. Okay, if it doesn't break that high, this does not support my case that it wants to go higher. If it breaks that low, that means this whole area is no longer a case. This area right here is the case. I hope that makes sense. So as of right now, it's no trade for me until I get a break. As of right now, I don't know if it's going to go higher or lower until I get a break of that or a break of that. So for me, CAD JPY is currently a no trade and I can't call anything right now until I get that structure. <laughs> that break of structure, okay? Uh, JPY. So RJPY, it's almost in the same situation. This is a very nice key demand area. We got another one down here. 
and we got some key supply area right there, right? As I start to mark these, the, the, the supply and demand zones, you start to see how things start to play out, right? And it starts to easily see how things play out here as they go into key supply areas, right? So we have this swing high way up here on a high time frame, and now we got to the swing low. And in a series of that, we created an area of lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, and now we're at that lower high. What do you look for next? That, right when I said that, now you can see exactly what you need to see, right? And I would need to see the same thing. I need to see the break of that trend or that channel. But for me, it's that structure, right? That structure right there for me is, is what I need to see to see if we break and hold. We break, it looks like it retests in it. And if it, re and if it holds, we're going higher. Yep, we're gonna to go to this area. And that's my key area of supply. Okay, this is my next key area of supply, which I doubt at a very low probability, not to say if you see, which I doubt it will go. No, I just say with a low probability, but this is a very high probability. It will go next once I get that break. I got to see this break, which it did, but I need to see it hold, right? And I'll be looking to go long. I don't think it's going to go low. This is the low here. It got to break that. And if it does, then I'll be willing to go short. Okay, those are two conditional situations. I need to see the break of this to go high, go long and buy. And I need to see the break of that to go low, go short. As of right now, I can't call it until it does either or, okay? If I wanted to go long, this was the trade to go long. If I wanted to go long, this was the trade to go long once it rejected and it hold, okay? Now it's up to this location right here and it's right above those structurally high, right here, right there. And it just broke that, right? So it looked like it's going to retest and it could break and hold. Retest, it broke, retest, and I'm looking for this to go higher. So if I was to call this, this is looking bullish. Yes, this is very, very much looking bullish. This is looking like it's definitely going to go higher and it's going to go right into that particular supply area, which I would be loving to go short, okay? Unless it comes back and it holds and it breaks below that. If it breaks below this and comes back, then I'll be looking to go short, okay? So as of right now, <clears throat> no trade for me until it comes back and, and, and break that. But if you wanted to take a trade, then I would look for confluence in the currency strength to see if we're going to get some more Japanese weakness and to see if we get some Australian strength. But as of right now, Australia, as you know, from, an, from a fundamental perspective, the bank's going to be closed for Monday. So it's not going to be a lot of volatility for Monday. So it's going to be uncertain. And then Tuesday, we do have Australia CPI. So if you want to wait and see what Australia CPI does, then this would be the opportunity to see what happens. Now, if CPI data comes in lower than expected, we could see the break of that and therefore that could break, okay? And this could be one of those trades to where it even holds all the way down here and then Japanese Yen comes in and be weak, and then Australia takes it right back up here. So we can see this particular situation. Very, very tricky to me. This is not really a good edge setup, and therefore I would pass on this one. NCD JPY. Look at this one. It's just it's worse than um, our JPY. This right here is key demand area, right? This is where exactly where I want to see it go. This is the nice key demand area. And this is a very high supply area. And we're, we're meeting some, res some resistance there, okay? So for me, this is not even a trade setup. This is, 
this is it's just nothing. We we got we got conditions of the market where it's just ranging, and it's just going up and down, up and down. Okay, um, I'm bearish overall on NCDJPY and all the yen crosses. So in other words, I would be in a range in a range position or in a range condition. I would want to short the upper end of the range, not long the bottom end of the range. Okay. So that means I would need to see this particular pair come back up and then I'd be willing to short it. But what if it goes higher? It could, this would be a low probability, right? Now, if you put a stop loss, you get stopped out. But if you trade the way, in other ways, you can hedge it, ride it all the way up here, make money on your hedge, and then take another low position here. And now you got two positions going in your favor. Would you like to learn how to trade that? To where you can make money, whether you're right or wrong. And that's a simple way to do that. But you just got to make sure you put the proper last size so your account equity can hold that so that you can you can trade stress-free whether this trade goes against you or not, right? Other, other than that, I'm not, not looking to do anything else until it gets into that particular area. So when it gets into that area, that's when I'll be looking to short Right here, this would be my supply. This is when I'd be looking to trade. Even if it comes down here, then I would need to look for a retest and break, and then I'll sort it there, okay? Other than that, look where it's at, between this supply and this demand zone. What the hell is that? It's in the middle, it's indecisive. You don't know what this thing gonna do. That's what it's been doing for the last week, right? I think it's gonna go up. I think there's gonna be um, some upside to this. I think this pair is definitely gonna go up. Yen is gonna be weak. I think it's gonna take this up just like dollar yen, odd yen, EJ and GJ. I think it's gonna take it, gonna go up. Once it's done there, I'll be looking to short this. And this is gonna be a really nice trade. And if I'm wrong, I'll sort it again. All right, so that's where I'm at. I'm a little biased on in terms of bullish for NCDJPY, but for me, I'm neutral and there's not a trade setup for me to even consider until it gets here, okay? Um, if it gets here, I may consider it shortened. However, I don't think it's gonna go there. I think it's gonna range a little bit more. It may go a little bit lower and then boom, it's gonna come back up. And then that's why I'll be looking to take short, okay? That's NCDJPY. I know, not no fun, right? If you're in those trades, now, Shelf JPY, little bit different story, okay? A little bit different story. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Okay, so if you get to a higher perspective data, take a look at this um, particular Shelf JPY pattern. This is on a annual basis, time frame, right? On a monthly basis perspective. So you can see where this Chef JPY reached extreme level in 1979. I know some of you guys were probably not even born yet. I get it. But some of you were. What were you doing in 1979? Probably a kid playing around in the bicycle, riding your banana skateboard like I was. Who knows? <laughs> right? It's a long time ago. Yes, it's a very long time ago. Chef JPY. Now, chasing girls, there you go, playing chase, hide and seek. That was me. <laughs> so 1979, right? And look how what happened. For 36 years, we did not come all the way back up here until 2015. Nice. Okay. Then we had this nice candlestick wick, just literally just because of Switch France and what they did in 2015 with the Switch Frank Bank. It caused a very, very high right? So US Swiss France did the same thing, except it was opposite. This right here was a black swan event because the Swiss French just shorted that um, particular currency, okay? I mean, they strengthened the currency and they did some things in that Swiss French back in 2015, this is the infamous 2015 Swiss French dilemma um, that the Swiss French did some things that was just illegal, but it caused a flash crash in that currency. A lot of people lost money and it's a lot of hedge funds that lost money on here. So that was a, a Switch French 2015 um, Black Swan event. Well, it literally came to the same area we saw back in 2019-79. It 
but we can come back to that position to seven years later. Yep, but not 36 years, but seven years later, 2022. That was last year. And now we're right back there. Okay. So going back to this particular pair now, to me, my friend, this is an edge trade. This is a trade. This is a trade you want to get into. This is an edge trade. So, um, not the dollar switch fund, sorry, Chef JPY. So, this is an edge trade. And if you can see that trade, that trade is just screaming bullish, right? And a lot of people is looking to go long when I am looking to short. I know, right? You're going to short something that's going up? Yeah, I'm willing to short and sell it to those who want to buy it, right? As traders, retail traders and buying it, I'm willing to sell it to them, <laughs> right? So this is a swing low. This is a swing high. This is the all-time historical high. I'm not looking to do anything else. Looks like with EJ, and unless I just want to short that bad boy. That's all I want to do. All I'm looking to do is short it, and I don't want to do anything else. And my line in the sand, oh yeah, this is all the man where I'm looking to go, right? Now, do I think it's gonna go that high, that low? Oh yeah, eventually over time, it'll give me 3,000 pips over time, right? I think it's gonna rebalance there for sure. More importantly, it's gonna at least come back 50%. That's my 50% mark right there between the swing, the swing low here and the swing high, that's my 50% mark. Okay, so this is Switch France. To me, this is a better setup out of all the yen crosses. Let's go do the to the dollar pair, uh, the daytime time frame to see exactly what's going on now. Okay, now this is not a great time to start shorting like right now just because of that all time high, right? Not yet. So there is a little bit more upside. It could go just to get you frustrated and manipulated, right? It could go another 18 pips. However, if you have patience and if you are able to weather a little bit of drawdown, you could take a cell right here, let it go up and let it manipulate and do all this thing before you enjoy the fruits of this labor, right? So your frustration would eventually be paid off with at least 954 pips to this demand level, okay? Now, of course, that's risky. That's if you got nothing else to do and you are not really sure when it's gonna go, okay? Now, let me break this down even further to kind of give you a little bit more accuracy, right? Because you don't wanna get careless, right? Because you can get wrecked, especially if you put higher lot size. Let's get a little bit technical here. I'm gonna mark this area up a little bit so you guys can see this. So we got this area of supply right there. We got this demand zone down there, and we definitely got another demand zone way down there. Okay. I am going to call this as a little bit of demand area right there, just so that you can be aware of potential short term targets. Do me just a little bit more. There you go. Okay, so here's what we're looking at. We have the structure right there, uh, okay? This is supply. This is demand. You got another demand. And you got another demand level right here. As you can see, it's not nothing right there, but it was set up way back over there. So this is a strong demand that has not changed, okay? Now, the potential move we're looking at is 540 pips for one, 767 pips for the second one, and eventually 1,070 pips. If you want to trade any yen pass, 
any year, any yen trades, any yen pairs, in my opinion, this is a, this is the historical trade you want to get into. This was a better setup than EJ, GJ, and I don't care if that's your favorite pair or not. I'm just giving you my professional and humble opinion on the best trade setup I'm seeing. You may agree, you may disagree. That's fine. This is what I'm trading, and you can trade whatever, and we'll both be happy. And I'm hoping it does work out for you on the other yen crosses. However, this is what I'm looking for. If you think you want to follow, or if you are in the same trade, this is what I would do. On Monday, let this thing do its thing. On Tuesday, let us do its thing. I'm going to be looking at our AI, predictive highs, predictive lows, to see what's going on with this particular pair as I'm looking for confluence, right? From a market structure standpoint, I'm waiting for this particular breakout right there, okay? And why that breakout? The reason why I'm looking for that breakout right there is because that break, that line, this low was established on April 18th. So that means last week since, uh, well, this, this low was actually established around, let's say, 17th, as, as early as Monday last week. And as you can notice, we have not broken that low. Why? Right, that's the question. We have not broken this particular low. And the low I'm talking about is 149.84, okay? You can put a chart alarm here, 149.84, or you can put 149.50, okay? So, let me see, let me put that. We'll put a chart alarm about right there, a little bit earlier. I'll we'll put a chart alarm for me. Let me double check that. Cross and down. This is how you put a chart alarm on trading view, by the way. Cross and down. And I'm gonna make sure I get this open ended. And it gives me a pop up, a notification on my app. It'll play a sound and send I wanted to do everything. If it can send it to my wife's phone number, I would have put my wife's number and my kid's number to let me know, hey, dad, I'm getting a alert on such every why. Just to make sure I don't miss this notification. Why? This is going to be historic. Wouldn't you not want to miss it? So I got my little alert just before it goes to that low so I can be ready for it. Okay? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to allow this to go up. Break that, manipulate, play around, and get traders to thinking it's going to go high. And then on Thursday, it may even stay up here with the with the yen weakness. Okay, it may not. I'm not doing anything until it considers to break that low. That low, what tells me it's going towards this 149.84. This is my line in the sand. There's no need for me to try to get into this trade up here, okay? I'm okay with 483 pips. I'm okay if I don't get into a trade to only miss 550 pips. 100 pip difference between 450 per se and 550, it's not gonna make a break me any more or make me any richer or less richer than you. We're both going to be profitable. I'm just not going to participate in all this manipulation until I know I got a very clean break of this structure. Okay? That's 460 pips. Listen, I get 460 pips from that break. I'm okay with that. I'm willing to hold it all the way down to get 700 pips on that. And I'm okay with even taking partial out there and hold the rest and let the rest be a runner down to 1,000 pips. Who's with me? You want to get trade set up out of all of them I just called? This is the one. This is the one. Okay. This is going to be a very good setup. Now, do I think it's going to do just like this? No, it's not. It's going to give me plenty of opportunities to get into multiple trades. How? Easy. This is going to be one. I can hold that one. That's more realistic. This would take anywhere between. Um, I want to say one to two weeks, 
This would be a nice swing trade for 540 pips. Hopefully I can get it within a week. That'd be great. But guess what? It's going to manipulate traders here because they're thinking it's going to be a resistance that's going to fake out, get a liquidity grab, and it's going to come right back up to this 50%. Why? Because you got retail traders thinking that is support and it's going to come back and it's going to go back and go long. Ah, you know, I'm going to resort it again. Reload. That's what we tell our coaching students. Reload, get ready to go. Sell right there. And guess what? It's going to come back here and it's going to go lower. That's 400, another, another 490 pips. So if I can get, let me see, if I can get 480, 489 pips there, let's say, let's say, let's say, let's say I can get 450 and then reload, I can get another 500. Let's, let's, let's think about this for a moment. 450, that'd be my first swing. 517 pips, let's count it, put in your calculator, right? And then it's gonna come back, it's gonna reload. Yep, it's gonna, it's gonna come back, it has to. It's just the way the market is, it's like to manipulate, come back up here, it's gonna reload. I can see this happening, come where somewhere in there, I'll be willing to sort it again to get another 500 and um, um, 584 pips. Let's say that from an estimate standpoint. For a total of 1,551 pips. And you had to get into it once, twice, three. This is how you make an epic trade. Who's with me? And that'd be awesome, right? And this is what we're going to be trading. And this is what we're going to be following in our live trade trade room. If you want to be part of our live trade room, as we call this out in our Telegram, live Telegram channel, as I get into the trade, I'll tell you when I get in, I'll tell you when I get out, I'll tell you when to either move your stop loss to break even, when to exit, when to reload, when to get back in. We'll analyze this at a very close accuracy. And we're going to be shooting for 151 pips or more, just one pair. Get this, within the next one to two months, this is how long it could take. Are you okay with making this on one pair and don't trade anything else on just Chef JPY? Why would you not? But we're going to trade other pairs, but you know, we don't want to stop making money, but this is what we're going to trade. This is the trade setup. I hope you got that one. I'll let you guys have it. Awesome. Okay, let's quickly get into the other pairs. Um, so these are minor crosses. I don't trade into these pairs. I get into swing trade on them. If I see really good trade setup. So I hope you guys enjoy that one. Um, so here's some really good setups here for real quick on the minor crosses. And then we're going to close out this call. Let me just mark this out real quick. So we got a nice supply zone area. Okay. And here we got a nice demand zone. Uh, about right there. We got another one down here. Okay. I'm bearish. I'm still bearish. I'm looking to go short. And this is my um, demand zone right there. And I like to see this trade go down. Okay. So this is um, supply. This could come in this area, but at least we're going to get at least 50% of this zone but I wouldn't be looking to buy until it gets into this demand area. So you're odd, I'm short. Okay, pound odd. Again, supply. Demand zone. Swing low, swing high. I'm short, just looking like it's coming back. It may not take out this high. If it doesn't, be ready to sort this. You can sort this at the break. That'd be a nice trade setup right there. Sort it at the break of 1.84. And that would be a good trade setup. And this could be going down as low as 1.7. 
okay? 1.7. Now, I don't think it's gonna go to all in one shot. I think it's gonna go more like that, but this looked like a potential setup for a swing, swing low, um, back to this particular mark. This would be around a 786, 886 level of the swing, and then we're going higher, okay? You're, you're odd, pound odd, I'm bearish. You're a CAD. This is supply. Very strong demand zone level here. Um, and this is the very strong demand zone over here. Sorry, let me get them color scheme correctly. Very strong demand zone level here, very strong de demand zone level here. Um, this is where I am. Look at that one. This came right up here. Three tests did not break that, and it looked like it wants to come a little bit higher. So there is a little bit potential that it could come higher on your CAD. I would look to see and wait for this candle to come up to see if it's going to take that high and see if it's going to come up higher. So I think there is a little bit more bullishness on your CAD. Okay. So your CAD is coming up and look like it's going to retest that high. So wait. Don't get into a cell here. Wait till it gets into a retest. It comes up, it comes into this zone and stays below this price. Then I would be looking to short it, right? Obviously it's going to create some type of market structure low there. And then you can trade the breakout of that low down to the downside. And right now I'm a little bit bearish on your CAD, but it's, it's looking like it's not ready yet for a short. But if you wanted to take this long, this would be risky too, because you're getting ready to buy back to a particular high. I would not buy until it breaks. And if it does break, like I said, I don't think it's going to go any higher than the top of this particular zone, right? However, it could. It could go right there. I could be completely wrong. So it could. It could easily go, you know, here, here, and then here. Either way, I'll be looking to short that. I'll be looking to short that, okay? We're talking about a real good run. That's a nice run, right? If you wanted to go long, that would have been a great place to go long, right? When I saw the retest of that, that would have been a place to go long. But right now you'd be late, right? Because it's getting ready to approach the previous high. Now you're gonna see if it kind of retest or break that high. So this is kind of a dangerous trade right now. I would not want to get into this trade. If you are in this trade, you may want to just get ready to at least trail it because it may, re may reject this high. But if it breaks, then it might be an opportunity to um, get into a long trade. However, I would wait because it's still, like I said, this is very tricky with these pairs. And unless you know how to hedge and manage your trade just in case you go wrong, which I do and I teach my coaching students to, if you if you if you are going short and you want to go short and this trade breaks out, right? You better have an invalid hedge right there because if it goes up, then you can make money, even though you were wrong here, right? You can make my money money on your hedge. You can lock in this position of your hedge right here. So that position would be about maybe about a hundred pips position that you can you can lock obviously on a lower lot size if you would like a 0.5 or 0.2 depending on your account size which we teach what the best lot size based on your account size you can lock in that 100 pip equity make money off of this and then get ready to sort it and then probably get out of a break even either way you're going to make money that's awesome i love that love it love it love it Okay, pound cad, where are we at? Pound cad, um, it looks like it's in the same position as your cad, right? You can see where right there looking at that key supply area, it's dancing around that key supply area, ain't it? It's just funny, it's just really just manipulating a lot of people. But that's the real key supply area up there. That is a nice demand zone right there. It's another one down there. 
Um, there is a small one down there, but I can think that's weak. I think it's going to go down there. So here's what it's doing right now. You can see where it's having a hard time breaking it, or a hard time breaking it, and it's already coming to look like right the right now. Here's the key thing: if this breaks, then I would go want to go long. I do. I would go long. It's going there. And we're talking about a nice mm, 385 pips. Okay, that's a nice, at least 389 pips. I would like that trade. I would love it. Okay, so here's what I would do. I would look for the break of that, that line of what we're talking about. 1.686 and go long. And then put, you can put your stop loss right here, or you can put the hedge either way, right? That would be my invalid zone. Ooh, that is too far, 300 pips. No, I wouldn't even put it that far. Nope, you can put your stop loss right there. You don't want your stop loss to be no bigger, no bigger than 100 pips. If you trade in that, that's still too big. I'll wait for the break of that. Look for a retest. You want to put your stop loss below the swing low of that particular trade. That would be on a lower time frame. It's kind of hard to do it on a higher time frame. So like I'm saying, go to the four hour real quick. This is the four hour. This is what I'm talking about. This is a zone, that's a supply zone right there. This is demand zone for this particular pair right there. Okay, so you're waiting for the break of that particular high right here. And it's almost there, right? We're talking this trade's gonna go up. And if it breaks, that's when you wanna go long, right? Bye. I would put my stop loss or my hedge, my invalid area, right about there. On a smaller time frame, you can see it. It's still too big, 133 tips. Obviously, we go down to a lower time frame, even better at 15 minutes to really get a good accurate of your swing high and swing low of your invalid zone. But this would be a potential buy area. And this would be a nice swing trade, about at least 400, 300 pips. I would be looking to go long. However, I could be completely wrong. It could hold. And if it does hold that area, then it's going to go back down. It's going to go back down to this particular zone. Okay. It could. So if it does hold and it doesn't break, then pound cat could be easily coming right back down to this particular zone and then back down to this area. It's been in this nice range for quite some time. We're talking about since um, March. Wow, March trade, right? March trade, and I would be bearish. So I would have sort that and I would be looking to sort that. But right now I'm looking to break. So I might have just wait and say, okay, what do I see? Because I'll be looking to short, but I would be looking for a rejection and then the retest of that break of that low. So if it breaks, I'm bullish. Okay, that's Power and CAD. Let's go down to the next pair. Let's go to your NCD. If you're trading your NCD, let's go to the higher time frame. Let's see what this looks like. Ooh. Boy, this thing been on fire. Okay, we obviously broke that. We're in that supply zone right now. This is looking way worse than I initially had it, okay? 
So with this being said, this is looking bullish. So this might go a little bit higher, right? So right now, this is not the time where you want to get into trade. You want to wait for a break or you want to look for a rejection in this particular area. To be honest with you, this is my supply area. I'm looking for a break in that one to go higher and I would wait. So either a rejection here at this supply or a rejection here at this supply, these two areas, oof. and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you right now, guys, this is an edge. This is an edge set up waiting and cooking up and brewing up to be a nice short trade, okay? Not ready yet because obviously you can see that candle. Look at that one. And this is going up at least, oof. This is what I like about it, okay? You can see where this swing low and this swing high, or you can say this swing low and this swing high, will come into at least 50% in this particular demand zone. That's just gonna be a nice trade setup once this thing turn around. Right now it's on a bull run and it's vertically going up and it's coming right into this key supply area. This is where I'm gonna be looking to see how far it goes. I'm gonna put this on my watch list right now. So your NCD, your CAD, pound CAD, they're all looking to be set up for a nice short trade. If this break this area, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna go in this area and this is when I'd be ready to look to short. So you may wanna put this on your, uh, on your watch list as well. So we're looking for a rejection and hesitation in this area. Um, this is, this is the daily candle. This is looking really good. I think I'm gonna follow this one a little bit better. So um, your NCD, looking for a rejection in this area. We're looking for some hesitation. And um, I'm okay with taking a small position somewhere in here and then taking another one up here. Okay. Um, the only thing is I would need to hedge it because that's a potential 233 pip trade opportunity I would not want to miss. So if I get into a trade position now, we got into a hedge right here, right? Um, this is starting to be a nice trade setup. So yeah. Okay, so this is where I'm going to put my short alarm, right? I'll put a chart on right there. Crossing up. I'm going to look for a rejection in this particular area. Yeah, update it. Okay, hey, your NCD, I'm looking for a rejection around 1.78, this area. I got my chart along there. I'm going to be looking for a price reaction, and I'm going to be looking for a short, and then I'll probably hedge it and then get ready to cross average it. If I'm wrong, or well, I might put a stop loss, depending, but this would definitely be a swing trade back down. So this is a good trade setup. Not ready yet, but I'll be um, more bearish bias once this gets set up, okay? That's your NCD, pound NCD, where are we at? What's, ooh, holy smack, these trades are, what am I doing? All right. Okay, so these are some real, real nice setup, guys. Go ahead and mark this up. Okay, so this is the same thing as your NCD and pound NCD. These are looking to be some good setups here. I'm gonna go ahead and put in a chart alarm on this one.
And this is at around, um, let's say, we can put it at 2.03 even. In fact, I'm gonna do that. 2.03 even, round number, get a nice little round number in that area, okay? And this is where I might be able to put a live trade setup as I get into this trade. Um, pound NCD, um, it could, if it breaks higher, I'm gonna be looking for the reaction in this area. So I'm looking for a rejection and then retest, and then I'm gonna short this bad boy. If it goes higher, then I'll short it again, okay? This could potentially go another 200 pips. Yeah, I would definitely hedge it and then go this way and then short it again, okay? Look at this setup. This is what I'm looking for right here. This is what I like those trades. I like these extreme level trades. These are extreme level trades. And these are hedges, right? These are, I mean, edge trades. You don't want to get into these little trades here, these little ones here. Those are the little ones. These are the big ones you want to get into. Anything in these key supply and demand zones. That's very good trade setups, okay? So with your, your NCD, Pound NCD, I'm short. Bears, not, not short, not yet, I'm bearish. Cat Chef. Boy, this is frustrating. Really? Wow. We're at an all time freaking low. All time freaking low. Okay. This is just not playing cooperating nicely at all. Huh? Okay, so I can tell you this though. This is not where you want to short. <laughs> so I would definitely want to go ahead and go long. Um, in fact, it might be a good time to consider adding to it, right? So this is looking really, really good for another short setup here. I mean, another long setup here. Look at these, all of these imbalances. This is gonna be a nice setup. When this thing goes long and CAD strength kick in, um, do we have any CAD news this week that anybody is aware of some really good CAD news, like a GDP? Yes, that would be Friday, <laughs> right? So I think um, we don't have any Switch France news this week. I know Switch France is gonna be on Bank Holiday this week, but I can tell you if anything, guys, Anytime this trade set up, like I said, it's short here, it's short here. It looked like it came up and then it came right back down. Guess what? It's another short trade here. I'm, I'm really interested in this one now. Well, I've been interested in this one, but this one is looking really good. There's a lot of fair value gaps along the way. This thing's got to gotta recover. Let's look at this swing. It's been on this nice bearish downtrend all the way down to 100%. We're at extreme level market conditions, of course. So tread lightly, trade lightly, and um, get ready to trade this even further. Okay. So cat judge, cat chef, I'm long. I'm bearish, and I would want to go long. I'm definitely looking to do this one too. So I'm going to put this on my, my list. So if you're already long, great, cost average, get ready. Okay, Euro pound. Euro pound, it's just been nasty. Doesn't want to break the supply level, great. Let's go even lower. Okay, I think, it's, I think it wants to come up a little bit more. Other than that, I'm bearish on Euro pound. Okay, Euro pound, I'm bearish. Not sure if that's one of the trades you trade. Pound chef, let me take a look at this one real quick. Um, nasty range, uh, be bullish. So pound switch French. Switch French has been beating up. I think this is going to go up at the same time cat switch French go up, okay? Switch French has been strong for the last week or two, right? And I don't think it's going to go any higher. Now keep in mind, switch French. It's going to be the same as Switch French JPY. 
and Swiss French JPY is already at its peak. So Swiss French doesn't have any more strength to push Swiss French JPY further than what it's already historically done, okay? So that's why this pound Swiss French has been sitting here at this key demand area and having a hard time breaking this area, which is a good sign for all your cat switch French buyers to consider getting into a pound switch French, uh, a cat switch French long as well. So pound switch French long, I'm, I'm, I'm bullish, cat switch French, I'm bullish, and switch French JPY, I'm bearish, which all points to a weaker switch French. And when it does, and it will, it's going to be a nice trade. It's going to be nice pips. Patience, patience, patience. Okay, odd cad. What we're looking at? Odd cad. We're looking to. Um, we're looking for more bullishness. I think this is well. We need a break of this structure right here, right? If we get this break of structure, because right now that would have been a nice buy trade. If you're in that trade, hold on for odd cad. Um, however. Hate to say this, but I think odd cat strength is going to come in, and I think it's going to slap it down just like euro cat, pound cat. That's been a little weak. I get it, but I think the strength is going to come in this week because we got USD cat, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, USD CAD. So uh, this this is um, this is going to be a little tricky. This may go up a little higher. May go up a little higher. Let me go ahead and clear this up. This may go just a little bit higher. Where are we at? No, we're not even at our key supply area. So we're almost there. So I would say once we get into this area, that's when I'll be looking to short it, okay? And then we'll be looking to take this down here, take this down here, or even take it down here before we come back up. So I think it's gonna come back up a little bit more. It'll play in this range. So with Oddcat, yeah, I'm a little bit more bullish before I go bearish. That's probably gonna be the same thing as NCD CAD. Let me check, yep. So we're, we're bouncing off of this area right now. I wanna see this come up a little bit more as it's, so I'd like to see this come a little bit more back up to this area before we drop. So let's see what happens here with NCD CAD. I think NCD CAD is gonna come up a little bit more. It's bouncing in this area. I'm just gonna do that before it comes back down. Okay, I'm not trading these pairs. I don't like these small 34, 40, 50, 40, 50 pip range. This is a, a very small wheat pair. Um, right now it is holding. So it looks like it's rejecting, holding. And if it holds, then this is gonna go back up here to the supply level. So NCD cat looks like it might be holding this particular demand area. But if it breaks, then we're gonna come down here. Odd uh, switch French. Ooh, this just look like the cat switch French dilemma and the pound switch French dilemma and the chef JPY French dilemma. This is all just clearly broke this level. Okay, looks like we got a little bit more. Looks like we got a little bit more area to go. Um, could be holding right about there. But if anything, I'm gonna move this right over. This is looking like it got more room to go to the upside. But right now I would be looking to buy odd switch French. Absolutely. NCD switch French. Woo! These are some really good at setup trades. Wow, how much more could this could go down? 129 pips. Wow, NCD Switch France is setting up.
Let me get some historical data and see where this is going. Uh, we'll go to the monthly. Oh my, this is a nice setup. Okay. All right. All right, so I am definitely looking into this one as well with NCD Swiss France. This is a nice setup to be, a, this is a good edge setup. This is this trade that you would wanna go, go long on, okay? Um, however, I wanna see more rejection as it looked like it's fallen. Okay. I would want to wait until I get a little bit more rejection hesitation. This could fall a little bit more. If this the case, then this could be the same thing as cat switch France. It could fall a little bit more. So this would be all just switch France. I think we had a very good key area, folks. Um, just a little bit more time before we see some signs of switch French weakness. Switch French has been enjoying the strength for the last couple of weeks, which caused switch French JPY to go push up. Um, dollar switch France to be pushed down, and CD switch France, odd switch France, cash switch France, pound switch France to all be pushed down. And they're all at a extreme low, which is awesome. So dollar switch France up, pound switch France, I'll be bullish, cash switch France, I'll be bullish, uh, odd switch France, I'm bullish, and so is NCD switch France. I'm looking at this one. Man, just pick one. To me, cash switch France and NCD switch France are some really good trade setups. So it's Oswin French and Pontswin French. Wow. So if you guys are any of those pairs, just pick one. So if you're all ready, don't get in more. Let's not get greedy. So just pick one because those are some really good setups. And I need to switch French. Pound switch French. That's you're telling me that's a really good setup. Um, odd switch French, absolutely. And CD switch French. Man. So this is what I want to see. I want to see the break of that before I go up. And I will, I will go to the, the lower time frame, of course. So, and then also uh, dollar switch French. I'll just repeat that one more time. Yeah, we're, we're at that extreme low to the dollar switch France. Okay, so those are awesome, really good setups. And also do odd NCD. Ooh, that was a nice trade. Whoever got into that one, that was a nice one right there. From that swing, we came all the way down to our 786. And this is going up higher, right? So this is going to go right back to this key, key um, demand area. And we could be going longer. Okay. So in other words, just could be doing this. Okay. So I can hit that area. Okay. So it looked like more bullishness on odd NCD, which is awesome. If you're in that trade, if you caught that trade down there, awesome. Good job. Um, switch France, you're a switch France. I don't like this pair, but this is one of those switch French pairs, right? This looked like it. So with this being said, this looked like it got a little bit more go. Just looked like a kind of a your, uh, NCD switch French. So NCD switch France, that's your switch France. I'll be, I'll be bullish. Um, NCD switch France looked like it wants to go a little bit lower as well. Odd switch France looked like it's already in that area. So this could be going a little bit lower. Um, pound switch France looking like mm, it may not go any lower. It could, but I think it's in this already demand zone anyway. And then cat switch French. It's, it's already there, it's any time now. So look like more patience, just in that area right there. Extreme, historical extreme level. So cats with friends at extreme historical level, right? Um, odds, uh, odds with friends. Not extreme historical level, but it's coming right back to the 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 black swan or a flash crash event here, right back in 2020. So this is the oh, this is the COVID situation. Yep, the COVID drop. So this is coming right back to revisit that at a, at a previous level. NCD switch France is that its previous low level of the 
Yep, COVID situation. Yep. So that's really, really good setup there. And then of course, Chef JPY is at a historical level, right? So any one of these pairs, guys, oh, so, uh, I got to pick one and get into those pairs. So I hope you guys do too. And then other than that, um, we'll be calling it out. We'll be reviewing some of those trades. Man, I'm going to get into one of those trades. I'm going to call that out. We'll put it into the live trade room session. I got my chart alarm. Hope you guys put your chart alarm on. Um, other than that, this was a great, um, long, extensive, um, thorough <laughs> and um, full review. That's still awesome, really good setups. And I really wanted to take the time to get some analysis as in, this is what I do every Sunday. I hope this is what you do as a habit. And I hope this was very helpful for you to see how we trade, how we set up for analysis and what trades we look for in terms of those edge, in terms of um, in regards to how we look for trades with our market structure using fundamental and technical analysis. Other than that, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Sunday and look forward to some really good setups and good luck on your trades for the week. All right, awesome and thank you. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.